Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. NASA has a new ride to the International Space Station for its astronauts and its SpaceX's crew Dragon capsule. So I wanted to give you a super quick rundown of the exact timing of all the events that a crew heading out to the ISS will go through on launch day, all the way from suit up to docking with the station. Now we're not gonna go over the Falcon 9 rocket or the Crew Dragon capsule details. If you need a rundown on that, I've already got a video going into the exact hardware here, comparing it to NASA's other new commercial ride, the Boeing Starliner. So check the description for a link to that video and an article version of this video for future reference. Okay, let's get started. Three, two, one. The launch events start at T minus four hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds when the Dragon capsule aligns its inertial measurement units and is configured for launch. T minus four hours and 30 minutes, the crew Dragon capsules hypergolic fuels for reaction control thrusters and the Super Draco abort motors are pressurized for flight. T minus four hours, 15 minutes, the crew hears a weather briefing before they suit up. And if you want to know what the criteria is to launch, here it is on screen. But we also have a link to this in the description as well, because there's there's a lot of stuff to make sure that they're good to go for weather. T minus four hours and five minutes, the crew is officially handed off from NASA to SpaceX, which is a bit of a formality, but signifies the astronauts are officially in SpaceX's hands. T minus four hours, the crew suits up at Kennedy Space Center's Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building. T minus three hours and 22 minutes, the crew leaves the building and gets into NASA and SpaceX's Tesla Model X crew transportation vehicles. In other words, the crew gets suited up and ready to go in just 38 minutes, which is faster than most of us get ready for work in the morning. T minus three hours, 15 minutes, the crew departs the ops and checkout building and heads the 13.6 kilometers or 8.5 miles to historic launch complex 39A. T minus two hours, 55 minutes, the crew arrives at the pad. Since they will travel about 13.6 kilometers in 20 minutes, it means they'll only average around 40 kilometers an hour. Come on, I mean, they should be turning on ludicrous mode and put on a show for everybody. T minus two hours and 40-ish minutes or so, the crew will do that ultimate walk across the crew access arm. Now, hopefully they'll walk in slow-mo so we can get some of that awesome cinematic footage. T minus two hours, 35 minutes, the crew enters the Dragon. T minus two hours and 20 minutes, there's a communications check between the crew and mission control. T minus two hours, 15 minutes, the seats rotate up, putting the astronauts more on their backs and closer to the screens and controls. Immediately after at T minus two hours, 14 minutes, they check for leaks in the suits and verify that they're good to go. T minus one hour, 55 minutes. The hatch is closed up and the ground support crew leaves the pad. T minus one hour and 10 minutes, the exact state and location of the International Space Station is uploaded to the Dragon capsule's navigation. T minus 45 minutes, the go, no go pole is taken to fuel up the rocket. T minus 42 minutes, the crew access arm is retracted. T minus 37 minutes, the Dragon capsule's launch escape system is armed, which gives the crew the ability to abort from the rocket if there were a problem during fuel up or during ascent. T minus 35 minutes, both the RP-1 rocket fuel and the cryogenic liquid oxygen begin loading into the first stage of the rocket, and the RP-1 is loaded into the second stage. It's around this time that you'll notice the rocket begins to look all smoky. That's not smoke, that's condensation from the cold, cold liquid oxygen loading into the vehicle. SpaceX super chills the liquid oxygen down to minus 207 degrees Celsius, which is just shy of the minus 219 degrees Celsius that would turn the oxygen into a solid. But this helps maximize performance and density. As the liquid oxygen sits inside the relatively warm rocket, it's going to warm up and boil off into a gas which expands nearly a thousand times in volume and needs to be vented out. Now, it's still extremely cold, and when it vents out into the atmosphere, it's going to create little clouds of condensation due to coming in contact with the humidity in the air. Now, this is normal, and it's a good sign that fueling is underway. T minus 16 minutes, the liquid oxygen begins filling the second stage. T minus seven minutes, the Falcon 9 begins to flow liquid oxygen 
through the nine Merlin engines on the first stage, conditioning them for the cryogenic temperatures of the propellant that will be flowing through them soon. T minus five minutes, the Dragon capsule transitions to internal power. T minus one minute, the flight computer begins final pre-launch checks and the tanks get pressurized to flight pressure, which is three bar. T minus 45 seconds, the SpaceX launch director verifies they are go for launch and it's officially time to get excited. T minus three seconds, the nine Merlin engines ignite and ramp up to full thrust while the hold down clamps hold on to the rocket until T minus zero. This allows enough time to ensure all the engines are performing correctly before committing to the launch. And finally, at T minus zero seconds, the clamps let go and the Falcon 9 lifts off the pad, beginning its 19 hour journey to the International Space Station. Now for the Demo 2 mission, it'll be the first time humans leave the Earth from the United States and go to orbit since the space shuttle's last mission, STS-135, which took off from this exact pad in 2011. In fact, one of the DM-2 astronauts, Doug Hurley, was on STS-135. That is so cool. The rocket accelerates, ascending vertically to get out of the thickest parts of the atmosphere, but pretty soon it will begin to pitch over and begins to accelerate horizontally. The rocket really only goes up to get out of the atmosphere. Getting into orbit requires an awful lot of horizontal velocity, around 27,000 kilometers an hour. As I like to say, to get to space you go up, to stay in space you go sideways, very, very fast. T plus 58 seconds, the rocket encounters maximum aerodynamic pressure or max Q, which is when the vehicle experiences the strongest aerodynamic forces on it. After this point, despite the rocket still going faster and faster, the air is also getting thinner and thinner and eventually is pretty much non-existent. T plus two minutes, 33 seconds, the first stage engines shut down or main engine cutoff occurs, otherwise known as MECO. T plus two minutes, 36 seconds, the first stage lets go of the second stage for stage separation. T plus two minutes, 44 seconds, the second stage ignites its single vacuum optimized Merlin engine and continues to accelerate the vehicle to orbital velocities. At the same time, the Falcon 9 does something super unique. Its first stage flips around using some cold gas thrusters up on its inner stage, and this ends up pointing the engines forward, preparing the vehicle to re-enter the atmosphere engines first. Now at this moment, the first stage is still coasting upwards, but after a few minutes, it will begin to fall back down to Earth. At around T plus two minutes and 52 seconds, you'll likely notice a ring fall off of the bell nozzle of the Merlin vacuum engine. Now don't panic, that's supposed to happen. That's a cork ring stiffener that holds the thin niobium nozzle extension in shape and keeps it safe while it's inside the inner stage on ascent. T plus four minutes and 45 seconds, the first stage booster has coasted to its maximum altitude or apogee of about 149 kilometers and begins to fall back down to earth. T plus seven minutes and 15 seconds, the first stage begins to re-enter the atmosphere and lights up three of its nine Merlin engines for an entry burn, which slows it down enough to survive the intense re-entry heating. T plus eight minutes, 47 seconds, the second stage cuts off officially placing the Dragon capsule into its initial parking orbit of 190 kilometers by 205 kilometers and cheering will ensue. T plus eight minutes, 52 seconds. The first stage begins its landing burn as it prepares to land on the autonomous spaceport drone ship. T plus nine minutes, 22 seconds. The first stage lands on the drone ship and cheering intensifies. T plus 12 minutes. The crew Dragon separates from the second stage. T plus 12 minutes, 46 seconds, the nose cone of the Dragon capsule opens, exposing the star tracker, which aids in navigation. T plus 49 minutes, six seconds, after a few checkouts of the Draco reaction control thrusters and a few pointing maneuvers, there's a phase burn of 16.11 meters per second to align the orbits of the Dragon and the International Space Station. T plus nine hours, 44 minutes and 44 seconds, there's another phase adjustment burn. T plus 11 hours, 10 minutes, 15 seconds, the Dragon capsule performs a 44.2 meter per second burn using its Draco thrusters to boost its orbit closer to the International Space Station. 
T plus 11 hours, 55 minutes, and one second, there's another burn. This time of 57.89 meters per second, which circularizes the orbit. T plus 17 hours, 40 minutes, and 24 seconds. After a few mid-course correction burns, the Crew Dragon is approaching the 400 meter Keepout Sphere, or KOS, and requires a go, no-go pull from Mission Control in order to continue. T plus 17 hours, 50 minutes, and 24 seconds, the Dragon Capsule enters the Keepout Sphere and hits Waypoint Zero, which is 400 meters below the International Space Station. T plus 18 hours, 15 minutes, 24 seconds, the Dragon Capsule arrives at Waypoint One and holds approximately 220 meters away to align to the docking axis. T plus 18 hours, 51 minutes, 24 seconds, a final go, no go pole is given for docking. T plus 18 hours, 56 minutes, and 24 seconds, the Dragon Capsule arrives at Waypoint 2, which is only 20 meters away and gets placed into a short hold. T plus 19 hours, 1 minute, and 24 seconds, the Dragon Capsule departs Waypoint 2 and goes in for the docking. T plus 19 hours, 6 minutes, and 25 seconds, a big sigh of relief from the crew and mission control, the Dragon is docked and the crew has officially arrived at the International Space Station. So there you have it. Nice and easy, huh? Well, you can actually try the docking yourself by going to iss-sim.spacex.com and see if you can do the final docking maneuvers yourself. It's no Kerbal Space Program, but it's still really fun. Let me know if you liked this video and if you want me to do another one for re-entry and landing. And if you want me to do a similar video when crew rides Boeing Starliner for the first time too. Be sure and let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below and be sure and stick around because I have tons more videos coming out that will help you understand all this cool stuff as we enter a new era of human spaceflight. Now, if you're watching this before DM2, be sure and watch my live stream because I will be there at Kennedy Space Center only about five kilometers away from the launch. I'll be there pretty much all day answering your guys' questions. Now, if you're watching this video after DM2, just tune in to any launch, upcoming launch. I try to stream all of them, or at least as many as I can. So it's a really fun way to interact and get your questions answered live. And it's just kind of fun to hang out with everyone. I owe a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping make videos like this possible, but also for helping me get my butt down to Florida to bring you guys some awesome coverage of these upcoming launches. Now, if you want to help me maybe script and research or get your thoughts and comments on videos before they come out or join our exclusive subreddit, our exclusive live streams, and of course, our awesome Discord channel, which has just the best space community, please go to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. And while you're online, be sure and check out my awesome web store for cool merch like this brand new shirt. This is our new future Martian Society shirt. It includes uh, Arcadia Planitia and the actual landing coordinates that it's currently the prime A candidate landing site for Starship, which I just think is super, super cool. And also we have some, uh, <laughs> over here we have some reminders of the atmosphere and the gravity on Mars and a friendly reminder to uh, be sure and wear your spacesuit when you go outside. So maybe one of you guys will be wearing this shirt on Mars someday, but while you're online, just check out all of my cool merchandise because this stuff does help me continually upgrade and make better and cooler videos for you guys. So uh, that's everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Thanks everybody, that's gonna do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.